Hi guys, welcome to part two of our uh, introduction here to Photopia and learning the basic tools for use in Photoshop um, and for creating uh, original um, and you know really unique illustrations um, fairly easily. So you should have already completed this portion of the assignment. That is, uh, you have a um, Photopia or Photoshop, either way, same difference, uh, document with one, two, three, four image layers plus a background, which is trans or, or blank at the moment. So your background has to be completely empty, uh, and then you need to have a layer for crust, a layer for sauce, a layer for cheese, and a layer for pepperoni or any other toppings you want. Uh, but what's important here is that each um, element is on its own separate layer. If you wanted to make another uh, topping like, you know, sausage or green peppers or pineapple, whatever, um, you just have to make a separate layer for each one. Um, the other thing that you want to keep in mind is make sure that all your pepperonis here are separate. Okay, if you um, ended up having any of them that are touching or overlapping like they are right here, that's going to cause issues on our next step. Um, so we're going to start with this. Uh, if you are not already at this point, go back and watch the previous video and catch up. Um, so this is what we're going to be going for. Here is my... Um, in progress, um, not finished, but in progress version. So what you're seeing here, the difference from this to this, um, this has had uh, a number of effects applied, what are called layer styles, um, to create the 3D look. So you'll notice that the pepperoni here looks uh, three-dimensional. looks like the light is shining from up here and the shadow is down here. It's also casting a shadow, which is called a drop shadow. Um, the cheese as well is three-dimensional, the sauce is three-dimensional, and the crust. And then the crust is casting a shadow onto the uh, surface below it. Um, you'll notice that they all use the same light. So the light is shining from the upper left and then shining down towards the lower right. So if the light is up here, it's going to cast a shadow down towards the right. Um, so how do you do that? That's um, Oh, and the other thing, I've, sorry, uh, the other thing that I didn't mention is the texture. Um, the textures that you're seeing here, if I turn them off, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, those are the textures. This is the picture without any textures applied. Um, so this is what we're going to create in this video. The next video will show you how to lay in the textures so that it looks as realistic as possible. Okay, so back to my original. This is what you should have at this point. Um, what I'm going to walk you through today uh, are two different um, techniques uh, that involve using uh, what are called layer styles. Layer styles. Um, let me put this on the screen and blow it up a little bit so you can see what I'm actually talking about. Layer styles. The two layer styles that we're going to be using specifically are number one, what is called a drop shadow, uh, and number two, that doesn't line up at all, does it? Close enough. Number two is what's called bevel and emboss. Okay, bevel and emboss. Um, so these are what we use for uh, creating these 3D effects, making this pizza really look like it is a three-dimensional um, shape made up of layers of things stacked on top of each other. Um, so with that said, here we go. Uh, so at the moment, you'll notice I have one, two, three, four, five layers total. Uh, the background is separate. Uh, if you made the mistake of combining any of your layers, like for example, um, if you did something like this, where your crust appears on the same layer as your background, that will not work. Okay, the way this tool works is it looks for the edge of the uh, layer. And in this case, the edge of the layer is all the way at the outer edge of the picture. So you want to make sure that uh, you have each layer separate and independent. If any of them are combined, you're going to want to go ahead and delete that layer and make a new one. Okay, um, 
So let's make some layer styles. Uh, first things first, if you want to organize your layers a little bit better, um, over here on each layer, you have a couple of different areas to be familiar with. The, the actual name of the layer on this layer says layer four, okay? Uh, if I want to rename it, I can double click it, as in click, click, and change it to whatever I want. So if I wanna call this layer pepperoni, I wanna call this layer cheese, I wanna call this layer sauce, and I wanna call this layer crust. Okay, so I've got pepperoni, cheese, sauce, and crust. You don't have to rename your layers, but uh, for some of us who are a little bit OCD, it, it feels it feels nice. It makes you feel warm and happy to have every layer named correctly. It makes it really easy to find them. Um, so to access the layer styles, what I'm going to do is simply double click either on the little um, thumbnail here or over on the right side in this gray area. You can also click this. Um, this EFF effect button down here at the bottom. Um, so I'm just going to double click and here is my layer style. So I'm currently on my pepperoni layer. Uh, layer styles apply to only one layer at a time. Um, so you have to be very aware of what layer you're currently editing. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. Actually, I'm going to also uh, lighten this up just a little bit. Again, just for ease of showing it in the video. Okay, so double click. Uh, here is my layer style on the pepperoni. So um, I'm going for a, a 3D effect, okay? So the first step of that is what's called a drop shadow. A drop shadow is the shadow that's cast behind an object uh, when a light is shining on it. So if you're holding your hand above a table and the light is shining down, the drop shadow is the shadow that's on the table. Okay, Photoshop makes it really easy for us to create drop shadows. Literally, all you have to do is double click the layer, and then down here at the bottom, uh, one of the styles here is drop shadow. Uh, now, be aware, there's a checkbox, which you can turn on and off. Okay, so that turns the shadow on and off. That particular shadow looks horrible. I mean, that it looks like my pepperoni is actually floating above the surface. Um, but I'll get to that in a second. So if you just click the, the checkbox, it just turns it on and off. Uh, but what you wanna actually do is make sure you click on the actual name drop shadow. Click on this actual line here, and that will activate that setting, and that will activate the settings over here. So it allows you to actually uh, adjust and alter the appearance of that style. If you just click the checkbox, uh, it'll turn it on, but then you don't really have any um, ability to adjust it. So make sure you actually click on the line here where it says drop shadow. Uh, here are the settings for the drop shadow. Um, you don't need to mess with all of them, but there are a couple that make a big difference. Um, I would leave the blending mode set to multiply. That basically just means make things darker, leave it alone. Um, this little square right here is the color of the shadow. Um, I, you can just leave it as it is. By default, it's gonna be kind of a dark brown color, um, but you can set it literally to any color that you want. You can make a blue shadow if you want. Um, generally speaking, you know, you want it to be black or just a darker version of a, of a brown or, or whatever color the object is that the shadow is on. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna keep it dark black, it's fine. Um, Right below that is opacity right here. Uh, opacity it, it is another way of saying how much you can see through that layer, okay? If I turn the opacity all to, turn this off for a second. Um, if I turn the opacity up to 100%, my shadow will be totally black. If I turn the, sh the opacity all the way down, it'll be completely transparent, okay? So, uh, you know, somewhere in the middle, uh, is generally good for a shadow. If you make it too dark, it tends to look odd, okay? If you make it too light, you can't see it at all. So uh, we're gonna go uh, somewhere in this neighborhood over here, okay? So I set it to 25, just arbitrarily, but you can play with it. Um, right below that is the angle, okay? I'll turn this up a little bit so you can see it a little better. Uh, below that is the angle. So the angle determines uh, what direction your light is shining from. 
So think about this little line here as pointing at the light. So if I point it straight up, set it to 90 degrees, let's just type in 90 degrees. If I set it at 90, that means the light is shining from exactly the top of the screen towards the bottom. Okay, so now my shadow is, is going directly downwards. Um, typically, I like to think of shadows as coming from one direction uh, or the other off to the side. Um, it's a little bit more dramatic if you have it straight up or straight down. Uh, straight up is a little bit weird specifically, but um, uh, feel free, play with it, do, do whatever you think uh, looks cool in your image. Uh, I do recommend you turn on this little checkbox right here. Use global angle. Uh, what this box does is links this lighting direction to all of your layers and also all of your layer styles. So uh, if you keep this checked, it means that your lighting will be consistent across all of your layers. And that's pretty important unless you're going for some weird effect with different shadows going different directions. But generally speaking, the light's coming from one direction all the time. So I like to turn on use global angle, okay? Um, so opacity, angle, and then right here is distance. You may have seen me goofing with this earlier. Uh, the distance is how far away the shadow is from the object that's casting the shadow, okay? Uh, this has the effect of making it look like the object is actually floating above the surface, okay? If you put the shadow really close, it makes it look like that object is, is close to the surface. If you make the distance really far, uh, it, it really starts to look like these pepperoni are actually, you know, levitating above the surface of the pizza. A little weird, uh, not really something I want uh, in this situation, but could come in handy later. Um, so here's my distance. I'm going to keep this pretty low, something like that. Uh, actually, even a little bit lower. Um, it can be kind of hard to see your shadow if it's too close. I'm going to actually spread it out just a little bit so you can see it a little bit easier. But I'm going to move it back over there in a minute. Um, I would leave spread at just 0%. It's a little confusing. It doesn't really seem to do anything all that useful. Uh, but right here is size, and the size is important. This is the... Um, the sharpness of the edge of the shadow, okay? So I, I don't know why they call it size. If it was up to me, it would call, they'd call it blurriness or focus or something like that. But as you turn this up, your shadow is gonna blur itself out, okay? Um, the general idea here is the shadow would be more blurry if the object was high above the surface. So if I really wanted it to look like these, um, these pepperoni are floating, you know, a, a few feet above the surface. I, I would definitely put a little bit of a blur effect in there. Um, in this case, that's not the case. So I'm going to actually keep my, my focus really sharp, turn the size all the way down. Um, I'm going to also shorten up the distance here. So my shadow for my pepperoni is going to be just like that. Okay. Um, a larger object would indeed cast a bigger shadow. In this case, pepperoni is, you know, very, very thin, so it doesn't really cast much of a shadow at all. Um, so I'm going to keep the distance really low uh, and the size really low as well. Uh, so that's the drop shadow, and that's what it looks like when you look at the whole thing. Um, if you want to see the effects of your, of your layer styles turn on and off, you'll notice now over here my pepperoni layer has this little effect box right underneath it, and it says drop shadow. If I hit the little eyeball, it'll turn those effects on and off temporarily so I can see them. Um, for now, I'm gonna leave them on, but you do see the effect, that's what it looks like. Um, let's talk about the 3D effect. Uh, so these still look like they're flat pieces of paper that are now just casting a shadow, uh, but what I really want is I want this pepperoni to really look like it is three-dimensional. It's got some thickness to it, okay? Um, the way that I do that is with this guy right here that says bevel and emboss. Let's turn that on. There it is. Um, now, the bevel and emboss in Photopia does tend to make your computer lag a little bit. Uh, when you use it, it's going to kind of slow things down, so you have to be patient. Um, 
you know, don't don't expect immediate instant results when using these bevel and emboss adjustments. Uh, but the results are totally worth it. It's really cool. Um, so you just saw what happened when I turned that on and off. You'll notice uh, my pepperoni now gets this sort of edge around it. What this um, layer style does is it takes that flat um, information in that shape and it adds an edge to it, essentially. It makes it look like the light is shining from one direction and casting a shadow in the other direction. So in this case, the light is shining from up here. It is creating um, a reflection or a highlight on that edge and creating a shadow on the opposite edge. So it uh, has the effect of making it look like it's standing up off the surface, okay? Um, the settings here are pretty simple. Um, I would leave inner bevel set to inner bevel. This just determines where that bevel is gonna be placed. If you put it on outer, it adds the bevel to the outside edge of the object, which means you then see the background color through it, which isn't really ideal. Um, an inner bevel puts the bevel on the inside edge of the shape. Uh, the others have various effects that make it look like it's like stamped into the surface or um, various other things that are more or less successful depending on what you're doing. Uh, I'm going to leave it to inner bevel. Um, the technique is very important. So uh, currently the technique is set to chisel hard. Uh, and what that does is it creates this edge that has these little kind of like hash marks or like rough edge going around it. It almost looks like the edge of a quarter, how it's got that sort of rough edge um, or a poker chip, something like that. Um, if I set the technique to smooth, it's going to put that edge really nice and smooth, uh, makes it more look like it's made of uh, soft plastic or rubber or something like that. Um, for the pepperoni, I like to use the chisel, um, and that gives it a nice crisp edge, okay? Um, the other settings that are important, uh, size right here. This determines the size of the edge of that bevel. So as I turn this value up, uh, number one, you'll notice it kind of lags a little bit. So as I change the setting, it sort of wants to think about it for a couple of seconds. Um, this can be a little bit annoying. Uh, particularly if you're trying to pull this slider left and right. Um, you might find it a little bit easier to control by actually typing the numbers right into this box. So you can try what, see what 10 looks like, uh, you know, see what 20 looks like. Obviously not good. 40 looks like that. Okay, so that is the, the size of the bevel. Um, in the case of my pepperoni, I, I know I want it to be somewhere around like three or four. Uh, that's three. I think that looks pretty good. Um, soften essentially just blurs that edge. Um, I'm going to leave it turned down to zero. If you turn it up, it's going to blur that edge and make it look like a smooth kind of bump as opposed to a cut out uh, piece of uh, pepperoni. So I'm going to keep the soften turned all the way down. Um, if I wanted to create something that had like raised bumps on a surface or even sunken bumps on a surface, I would use the smooth setting, but in this case, I'm not. Um, and then lastly, up here is the depth. And let me turn the size up a little bit so you can see. Um, what the depth does is it changes the contrast between those light parts and those dark parts. So if I keep the contrast, or if I keep the depth turned down low, you'll see that it is the, the flatness essentially reappears. Um, as I turn that depth up a little bit at a time, you'll see the contrast of that edge begin to appear. So the higher you set this, uh, the, the more difference you'll see between the light side and the dark side. So that's that. Um, I'm gonna set my size to three, keep the depth just where it is, and there you go. There's my three-dimensional looking pepperoni. Um, now, if you watched me do this in class, that's the only part that you saw. Um, those of you who are now watching on the video, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I did it on the other layers as well. Uh, if you don't need this, go ahead and skip it. Um, but uh, if you're curious how I got the effects on the other layers, I'll do those as well. Um, so let's do the cheese. Double click. Here's my layer style. Um, I'm going to do the drop shadow. You'll see it goes a lot faster after the first one. Um, drop shadow. Now I'm not seeing my effect, which is a little bit weird. But if I press OK, uh, whoops, 
Mm. There's the bell. Sorry about that. I'll be back. Okay, sorry about that. Got interrupted. But um, basically, you're going to use the same exact technique on the other layers as well. So this is my pepperoni layer. You can see the effects that I've applied. Um, you can hit the little eyeball next to your effects. It'll turn the effects on and off. Um, so for my cheese, I have similarly a drop shadow. You can just barely see it there on the edge. I'm going to open this up real quick. Um, I'm going to turn up the distance on my drop shadow just a little bit. Then I'm going to do a bevel and emboss. Uh, the, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see what I'm talking about. There we go. Um, now, that bevel and emboss, you'll notice, looks very weird. Okay, It has um, this really rough texture to it. That is because of the chisel hard setting. That worked pretty well on the pepperoni, but it looks really weird on the cheese. So instead of chisel hard, I'm going to choose it to smooth. Um, I'm going to turn up the soften setting a little bit so it kind of squishes that edge and that looks a heck of a lot better, okay? Uh, size, I'm just going to make one pixel larger, so that's four, and there you go. Now, don't make your settings exactly the same as mine, okay? The, the idea here is not copy the settings exactly and it'll work the same. Maybe, maybe not. So what you want to do is tweak your settings for your own layers to get the look that you want, okay? Um, here's my sauce, double click, drop shadow. Um, it will keep the same setting as the last time I used it. So when I turn that on, it's automatically the same as the cheese layer, which makes it very easy. Uh, bevel and emboss, turn that on. That looks okay. I'm gonna make my sauce a little bit thicker. So instead of four, I'm gonna go up to seven. Uh, and that's just gonna make the size of the sauce a little bit thicker than the cheese, which makes sense. Um, and then lastly, for the crust, double click. Here is my crust setting. I'm gonna do drop shadow. Um, I'm gonna make my drop shadow distance larger on this one. I'm also gonna turn the size up a little bit so that blurs that edge. Uh, most important for the crust is the bevel and emboss setting. Um, let me zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole thing. Zoom out, zoom out. Okay, so now you can see the shadows that I put on my uh, cheese and sauce layer. On the crust, it's not working so well right now. I don't want this crisp, hard edge on it. Um, so my bevel and emboss, I'm going to turn up the size here until what I have looks like a nice round pizza crust. And it really, we want it to really look as realistic and round as possible. I'm gonna turn the soften setting up here. So that's gonna make it nice and blurred together so I don't have any sharp edges. Um, I'm gonna turn the depth down just a little bit. Um, and that's gonna loosen that or, or lessen that contrast a little bit. So there you go. There is my completed, um, I don't want to say completed, but at least I have the layer styles applied to my pizza. Um, crust, sauce, cheese, and pepperoni. Good luck.